QuickBooks Online 2024 Sales by Customer and Income by Customer Reports. Get ready and some coffee because we're looking at some quick tips with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are online in our browser, searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up our major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports on the left-hand side in the favorites. We're right-clicking on the balance sheet to open link in new tab. Right-clicking on the profit and loss. Once again, opening the link in a new tab. Going to the middle tab, closing up the hamburger. We're going to change the range up top. Going from first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, Actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one. Because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our accounting rocks product line if you're not crunching cords using excel you're doing it wrong a must-have product because the fact as everyone knows of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. 010123tab, 123tab. Run it to refresh it. And then we'll tab to the right, close up the hamburger once again and change that range. Ultra base another time. 010123tab, 123123 tab running it to refresh it again these being the major two financial statement reports we're now looking at other reports most of which are going to give more information about one or multiple line items on one of these major two financial statement reports this time we're looking about at more information related to the income line items of the profit and loss as we consider sales by customer and income by customer reports. Let's first open those up, going back to the first tab, down to the reports on the left-hand side. Close it up, let's close up the hamburger and scroll down to the sales and customers. So just a quick uh, look at some of these reports here. These, because it's sales and customers, you would think that the reports in this section would be giving more information about the income statement account of the sales or income accounts, as well as possibly the accounts receivable account for those sales that were made on account that need to be tracked. Although most of the accounts receivable type of accounts would be in the category up top we looked at before of uh, who owes you money, where we have the AR aging reports. Let's give a quick recap of the reports in uh, the sales section. So where was I sales? We got the customer contact list. That's just a contact list that has the phone numbers and addresses and so forth, not really tied into a financial statement report, just a list of the contacts. We've got the deposit detail. Now you can think about that one as kind of like an income statement supporting report because we're hoping most of the deposits are coming from the customers. However, uh, it's a balance sheet account. The deposits are ultimately going into the uh, cash account on the balance sheet. And you can probably look at the deposits as well if you went into the balance sheet and you sorted using your filtering option going into the checking account here, for example, using our filtering options up top here's our filter we can add a filter and look at the transaction type and look at it uh, equals to and then the deposits boom and so then we can see so that's one way that you might uh format oh, hold on a sec the transaction let me do it again the transaction type not equal it should be equals not not equals and so that's one way you can kind of look at the deposits and you can also look at that other uh, deposit report. So I won't go into that 
in detail. That's kind of a cash supporting report. And then the estimates uh, and progress invoicing summary by customer. So that has to do with estimates being a report that doesn't impact the financial statements. It's, it's going to possibly be used to create an invoice so we can track the estimates. Their progress invoicing having to do with uh, a job cost system for longer projects where you might want to invoice possibly recognizing some revenue as the work happens, which is a little bit unusual because normally under revenue recognition principles, we recognize revenue when the work is done. Then we've got the estimates by customer, once again, tracking the estimates, which aren't actually an income line item. These are reports that are tracking internal forms, such as uh, the estimate, which doesn't have a financial transaction. Here we have the income by customer summary. That's the one we, we're gonna focus in on shortly. Let's just go through them first though. And then we have the inventory valuation detail. Now this report has to do with inventory. So I'm not exactly sure why they would put it into the sales area. Although maybe it's because obviously when the inventory goes down, it happens with sales, but we'll possibly take a look at that there later. Inventory valuation summary, the, the payment method uh, list. This is the list of payments that are gonna go on internal reports and the physical inventory worksheet. Once again, inventory uh, supporting worksheet that can help us to track the uh, inventory and do a physical count. Product service list. This is a list of uh, products and services. So it's basically just a list. And then the sales by customer detail. So now we have once again, the sales by customer, which is going to be breaking out the income statement account this time uh, by the sales or revenue line, sales by customer summary, sales by customer type detail, which would only which would be useful if you had different customer types. And then sales by product service detail, we'll take a look at that later. This would be sales income statement account broken out by what it is that you sell. Time activities by customer, tracking the time information if you're inputting time into the system. Transaction list by customer. So we could just have all the transactions listed by uh, the customer and you would think most of those customer transactions would be related of course to the sales cycle transaction list by tags tags being those special uh, added feature that you could use if you wanted to turn on the tags we have another course or section on that if you want to look at that in detail so now we're looking at uh, focusing in on the income by customer summaries uh, income by uh, and then the sales by customer summary uh, reports that's going to want and the sales by customer detail that's our focus let's first open the income by customer summary i'm going to right click on it and open that tab and it opens to the right let's uh, close up the hamburger and bring it back to 2023 010123 tab 123123 tab run it to refresh it there is that one. I'm going to go back on over. Let's just open all three of these reports so we can see them side by side. We've got the sales by customer summary. Let's right click and open that one in a new tab and just format it. We'll go on over to it, close up the hamburger and change that range back to 03, 01, 01, 23, tab, 1231, 23, tab, run it to refresh it. There is that one back to the reports on the left. And then we've got the sales by customer detail report. Let's right click on that one and open link in a new tab and check it out. So we're gonna open that up. Uh, and then let's see if we could, we've got the new view on this report. So let's try to deal with the new view. We could go back to the classic view, but let's keep it on the new view so we can practice that. Cause this, I think they'll keep this one cause it has some nice things to it. So let's go to the custom dates up top and go from 010123 to 123123 tab. And there's our detail on this report. I'll close up the hamburger. So when we look at the income statement, if I'm looking at my income lines, you'll recall that the income lines were gonna have less detail in the income line than in the expense lines. In other words, on the expense items, we're usually going to have more types of things and categories that we need to be paying for than on the income side of things because we're specializing on income and doing what we do well. Therefore, the types of income accounts, the things that we do to generate income are usually going to be fairly finite. 
So what we want to avoid doing on the income accounts is usually not try to record our income accounts by customer, which is a tendency we might have, meaning we might be saying, hey, I'm, I'm going to record income customer number one or income customer number two, income from this person, so that I can track who paid me on the income statement. You don't wanna typically do that because it'll make your income statement very long, number one, and number two, you should be able to track that information elsewhere on another report. So instead, we should have the income line items that are just reporting the kinds of things that we are doing, similar to the expense items, which aren't being reported by a vendor, but rather by the things that we're paying for. So, so that's, that's the idea. Now on the sub ledgers, so these are basically sub ledgers. If I go to, let's go to this one first, the sales by customer summary. This is the classic sub ledger, meaning now I have my sales broken out, not by, not by when they happened or not by what we, the category of thing that we sold, but rather by customer. So these are the sales that were made for, for each customer through the time period on the income statement. Note that the, the date up top has to be a range because this is a performance report. And the total down here, 10, 280, should tie out to what's on the income statement for total income, 10, 200. It doesn't. You're like, wait a second, doesn't tie out. Why doesn't it tie out? Well, the these subledger reports QuickBooks does not force you to, to every time you record something to an income type of account, any of these accounts, QuickBooks does not force you to add a customer. So it's possible for you to throw off the sub ledger by posting something to these income accounts that doesn't have a customer related to it. Note that the sub ledger is similar to the accounts receivable on the balance sheet. The accounts receivable and the accounts payable had sub ledgers. Those tied out exactly that's far more likely that those will tie out exactly because QuickBooks does force us every time we post to AR or AP accounts receivable or accounts payable to have a customer or vendor selected because QuickBooks is, is, is going to make us have the sub ledger tie out that way. So they don't do that with the income, which means we could throw off the sub ledger. But if you record all of your financial transactions with invoices and sales receipts related to income, when you sell stuff, you use the sales forms, in other words, of invoices and sales receipts, it should tie out because you will be applying customers every time you do that. Now, the exception to the rule then would be, what if you're just doing bank feeds? You have gig work, you're getting paid by YouTube and other platforms, whoever's, whatever platform is paying you, you're waiting till the deposit goes through and you're recording it with a bank feed. Well, in that case, or a bank deposit, in that case, you might not have the added detail of these sub ledgers because you're not using the income forms of invoices and sales receipts. It might still be a good system to use because it's easy in that case and sacrificing the added detail might be well worth it and therefore, in that case, you may well say, I'm just going to create each income line and call it YouTube income or whatever platform income, right? Because, because in that case, you're not going to have a sub ledger and most of your income is coming from these large one customer or platform areas. So, so, that, so that would be kind of the exception to the rule. But if you have, if you're selling other stuff like bookkeeping services, law firm, or if you're selling inventory or things like that, normal businesses where you have to use uh, in invoices and sales receipts, then you're not going to want to list out your income by customer and you're going to want to make sure that, that you get the more detail or you can get the more detail with these uh, sub ledgers. So these sub ledgers are great as well, the sales sub ledgers to then use to create pie charts, which we might take a look at uh, in future presentations too. So there's that one. So then we have this one. Now this one is an, is an income by customer summary. So what's the difference between, it, it seems pretty much the same, sales by customer. We're using the term sales as a revenue line, sales, revenue, income. They're basically the same term as they are being used here. They're the top line of the income statement. This one says income by customer. So I, I believe the idea here is they're trying to say, kind of net income. What's the net impact on the income statement per customer? And you can see here that we have the expense column. 
So now we've got these customers that had an expense related to it. Most likely it's going to be a cost of goods sold expense, right? So we had income and expense. So the net impact on net income, or you might say gross impact, gross income would be 968341, right? If I go back on over here and we look at do, 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 gross income 979577, it's not exact. But if we used the invoices and sales forms and the items correctly, it should be exact. Uh, and if you're off on these accounts, you're saying, oh, man, it doesn't tie out. So I'm never going to get that to work. Uh, that's not the case, really, because remember, the income statement starts over every year. So if you had a mess last year and you want to do it different this year using the sales and then this this number will tie out in the current year because the income statement is a is a temporary has temporary accounts that all close out and then start over you know in the next period so that you can tie everything out uh so 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 in so like i said the income statement then is an area where it's easier to kind of fix the changes or fix things going forward by saying okay i'm going to draw the line stuff was messy before but now I'm going to make it right in the current year going forward because the income statement rolls out to the balance sheet. The balance sheet is more difficult to do that because if your accounts receivable is messed up or if your accounts payable is messed up and your subledgers are just a mess or your inventory, then it's more of an issue. You have to clean it up more carefully because uh, or you can't use the method at least of saying I'm going to I'm going to recognize it's been messed up up until this point and I'm going to fix it going forward because these are permanent accounts that will always be there, right? So if, if there's a subledger issue that doesn't tie out in these ones, then you've got to take your time to properly fix it and do it in such a way that you don't mess up the prior period and, and that kind of uh, thing. So, uh, so there is that. And then we have the last one, which is in the, this is the new format, uh, which they're using on some reports, the new look. So just a quick look at this. We've got the switch to the classic. You can bring it back to the classic view. You have the actions email report, add to management report, export. So here's your export to Excel. The CVS you can export to, which is basically like an Excel format without the formatting. Uh, export or print. We can save it. We've got the date changes here. We've got the groups. We've got our filter, uh, the general options on the right that's where our cash accrual so they don't have it showing twice this way which is kind of more efficient in some ways so i think this view is actually uh pretty good and then you have your columns that you can adjust the columns possibly and then this report sales by customer details similar to this report but now it's giving us the detail by customer so now it's listing the customer and showing the transactions for that customer and so I wish the one thing on this one is it seems like the, the ribbon takes up a lot of space, like this backspace, they should move it, the whole thing up a bit. But in any case, uh, uh, so, you know, because you, anyway, so, so, so now you've got the drop down of the customer and then the invoices and the detail for that customer within it. So that's going to give you the detailed report, of course. So in future presentations, we might take this uh, sales by uh, sales by customer and make a pie chart out of it or something. If you wanted to make graphics or something out of it, this would be one of the ideal reports to do that with because we're focused on sales is the goal of the business, revenue generation. So we might make some fancy uh, charts on that by exporting it uh, to Excel. Now, the other thing that often happens with the income line items is people want to record too many lines by item, the different things that they sell, goods and services, which again, isn't what you typically want to do. You want to have the major grouping of items that you sell usually. Why? Because once again, you can have another report, which is going to be revenue or sales by item, by things that you sell. We'll take a look at those in future presentations.